What's up, kids? In this video, we're going to do things a little different. This is the final piece. Critical Role, Campaign 3, Bells, Hells. And no, I didn't intend to do another Critical Role video this soon. This piece has just been slowly moving forward in the background since before my channel was born. Now for the different angle. As you watch this video, I'd like you to keep in mind the idea of perfectionism versus creative evolution. By that, I mean how much is perfectionism? Getting stuck in that idea of something being perfect and being unable to move on. Micro-tweaking and adjusting to the point of oblivion. And how much is naturally going to happen through creation? How much is bound to occur on its own? springing forth fluidly as you navigate that creative process? And, should you get hung up on this? Or, should you analyze it? Should you limit yourself and know where your stopping point resides, or progress and hang on until you are satisfied? Alright, let's get into it. Yeah, so this one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, a few things about the drawing before we get into the dialogue voiceover, if you want to call it that, even though there's video. Um, the drawing in particular, I did this before, like I said, I started my channel. Generally, I would record this in 4K versus 1080, so right now it's sketchy, but it will probably look even worse to an extent as we get further in because the canvas size changes, we get finer line. Um, so just for reference, um, it is what it is, I can't change it, but hopefully the content is still interesting and you'll have some good photos at the end that show you the piece in, in high definition. Um, so just for the sake of knowing that, uh, the piece in general also shifted a lot throughout the production of it, um, but more to the point of what I want to talk about is I'm going to do this a little different because I recorded this once and I was a little dissatisfied with it and I think it just perfectly ties into the whole theme of the video, which is perfectionism versus creative evolution. And so I've decided to record this secondary uh, voiceover monologue, whatever you'd like to call it, without actually watching the video. Typically, I watch the video as I'm recording this, and I think it often, while I'm able to talk about the piece more, uh, the dialogue for this, I don't want to be so much about the piece and more about this idea. Because I think as I'm doing that normally, I usually get too caught up in what's happening. I think it'll distract me from the point. Not that I don't make points, but I think my points might get muddled or I never get to the full thought. So I thought I'd record this as an overlay to what you're watching now. So I'm not going to be talking about it entirely as it's happening. I might make references as it feels applicable, but it won't be, hey, look at this thing in real time. Because <laughs> uh, frankly, it doesn't meet the criteria for the video that I'm going for. Um, all that being said, <laughs> um, this video is about perfectionism versus creative evolution. And I think it perfectly encapsulates that idea because this piece, uh, this piece took me 180 hours to complete. And I don't like saying that. It makes me feel gross. And you're probably cringing. You're like, what the fuck? It's not even that interesting or good. Why did you spend so much time on it? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All fair questions, all fair questions, um, and never intended to. This piece, like I said, I, I've learned a lot through making this, and it took me several months, which is probably downplaying it to complete. Not hard working, I took breaks, obviously, worked on different things, had periods where I didn't draw at all, but it was off and on for a very long time, and my abilities shifted throughout the creation of this. I learned a lot of new techniques. I learned brushes that I might like over other brushes, had to revert because I realized to an extent halfway through that the brush I was using at the scale I was using it with resizing characters, it just made it feel very rough and it didn't feel finalized. It felt too sketchy 
again, even though that was part of the original creative idea, I learned that I didn't like it as much and I wanted more of a solid brush. Um, that's one example, but the point being the characters themselves go through multiple iterations. Um, not just their pose, but even just like their face tweaks. Like I'll, I'll go to a point, I'll leave it, I'll move on, do a bunch of other things, and I'll come back and it's basically it looks like someone entirely different. And again, the point is I wanted to think about perfectionism versus creative evolution. Now let's really dive into that. Perfectionism feels fairly obvious, right? It's getting held up on that idea of it being perfect, um, obsessing about it, and just tweaking it and nitpicking it and poking at it until it gets to a point that you might feel happy with. But it, is it valid? Because how much time are you spending on it and you're not allowing the piece to live because of your own dissatisfaction or your own goal towards perfection, your own idea that it has to be this exact idealized thing that realistically might not exist and you might not ever be able to achieve. Um, it's holding yourself to a standard that is unrealistic. Now, I often fall into this pattern myself. As I said, I'm re-recording this because I didn't feel like it satisfied the intent of the video that I wanted to provide. Now, is that inherently wrong? Was it inherently wrong for me to spend 180 hours on this piece of art? Probably not. It, would everybody do that? Probably not. <laughs> um, so that's the point in which I want to talk about creative evolution. How much of that is perfectionism? How much is that nitpicking? How much is that obsession? How much is, though, a natural evolution? How much will happen as you go through the creative process, right? You will learn things that you never knew, and you'll go to places that you didn't think it would, it would go, or processes you didn't think you could achieve, because as you nitpick, as you alter, as you tweak, things will naturally change, and it'll open your eyes to things you never thought possible. You know, I never would have looked at these characters and outside of looking at their, um, you know, base drawings that would be representative of the character portraits, I never knew exactly where they would go. Um, you know, I, I, I compiled a bunch of resources, um, different fan art pieces and things like that. So I had a reference point of things I enjoyed and places I wanted to go, but I didn't know what the final layout would be. I didn't know what the final poses would be. I let myself find that naturally. And I think in perfectionism, with this piece, right, I, I think there's a, a point in which you could easily say, well, if I would have spent more time in the pre-planning, it could have been better. I could have not wasted so much time. I could have achieved my goal at a faster rate. To that exact antithesis, is it also valid for me to want to naturally find that, right? I like sculpting. I like molding and shifting things. And as you watch this, you might see that the piece looks like it's just tweaking and shifting and molding and morphing into this new end-all being. And it might, from the perspective of the video, might seem like, oh yeah, it's always moving towards an end goal that feels inevitable and feels like, yeah, you're just working towards that thing. But in the middle of the process, that is completely absent. <laughs> the end goal is probably not realized in your mind right? And that's true for a lot of things in life, if we're being completely honest. How much of your life do you go through that you really don't know what you're doing, right? It's easy to look back on your life and see, oh yeah, this step led me here and put me to this thing, and that's what made me have the perfect life. But that's so unrealistic. That's so wrong. So much of it is just muddling your way through day-by-day -day alterations to get you to a place where you're happy because really that's the the point of the art and the point of life let's be real is you're looking for something that satisfies you you're looking for something that makes you happy that gives you the feeling of completion that gives you the feeling of pride feeling of well i don't hate this so this must be the right direction and i can tell you for myself <laughs> I very frequently <laughs> find or have in the past found that I'm, I am dissatisfied. And because I didn't know the direction to go on, I felt stagnated. I felt stagnated in my art. I felt stagnated in my real life because I didn't know how to proceed in a way that mattered. I didn't know how to see the end goal and I didn't know how to capture that. I didn't know how to move. So 
what I've started to implement in my life and what I've started to implement in this piece in my art in general is knowing that that's okay, that you don't have to know what the end is, that it's okay for you to let that find you because it will. It will if you let it. If you let go of some of the control you have on trying to micromanage, <laughs> skew it into oblivion, right? Where I have to know what's going to happen next. I need to know exactly where I'm going. It's an impossibility. And I think maybe some, you know, if, if you're an artist and you're, you're watching this, maybe you'll, you'll look at your art and you'll be like, well, that's, I know my art is just going to naturally form. Sure. But what I want you to think about is how much What I want you to think about is how much of your art can you try to mitigate your response of nitpicking it, right? Whether that's comparing it to others or um, saying it's not good enough or it doesn't meet a certain criteria. Or whether it's just in the general creation process, how much of you're like, oh, this looks like total shit. And instead, just allowing it to flow naturally, don't get held up on those micro details. Don't get held up on how long a piece takes, right? Get held up on the idea of, well, I'm moving towards something, and when I find it, I'll know it. When I find it, it'll make me happy. It'll give me that feeling of satisfaction. It'll give me that feeling of, I made something with myself, with my art. I've done something that makes me happy. And I think that's the goal. And I think that's something to strive for because it is a journey, it is. It's, it's a process. And that's something that I think it's easy to get held up on that I often forget and I have to remind myself, right? Like, I'm talking to you if I'm this authority, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I don't know what I'm saying as I'm talking to you. It's just kind of coming out of my mouth. Like, I've thought about it, sure, but I didn't make a script. I made a script for the intro of this video where it's just, you know, me talking over the bass drawing as the first couple of seconds. But... That was just to give a creative idea, right? To propose a thought process that I wanted to implement as we moved into this section. But for this section, I have no idea really what I'm going to say. You know, I recorded it once and I came to the point of it felt lacking. It felt like it was missing something. And it's interesting because as I make videos and I've talked about this with, you know, people in my life, how I always strive for this idea of perfectionism because I, I very much value... Um, doing a good job. I want to put my best foot forward. I want to make something that makes me happy, that satisfies other people, that is good enough for other people and good enough for me to feel good about myself. But I'm also very much aware that I don't want to get held up in that idea. I don't want to be the person that nitpicks their life. I don't want to be the person who's always dissatisfied. And I'm moving away from that. I'm trying to be the person that goes with the flow, that lets things happen naturally. And it's okay that I don't know where I'm going, and it is scary, but it's the right course of action because I'm significantly happier as a person because of that. So in making this video, in refilming this, I felt inherently conflicted, right? Because I didn't want to nitpick my own video because I'm trying to get away from that idea. I wanted to do something that felt very natural. I wanted to do something that felt very real. So it's this weird balance of, well, clearly the first thing you film is going to be the right step. <laughs> is that true? I don't think so. I really don't. And again, it's that weird process of, well, I don't know if this is the right thing to do. I don't know if it's okay for me to refilm it because I'm trying to not be nitpicky. I'm trying to not deliver a message that while I want the message to be clear, I don't need it to be exact, right? Right. And it's a weird process. It's a weird process that I find throughout all of my existence. And hopefully you can relate to that. Hopefully in your life, there's things where you try to micromanage and try to control. And at the end of the day, if you just let it breathe, if you just let it be and you give it time to develop naturally, to develop on its own and let it take the course that it should take, things might work out better. And I think that's true for people too, right? Here's an example. Say you're a parent. Is it better if you let your child, here's a hypothetical for you. Is it better if you let your child figure things out for themselves? Or is it better if you control every step of the process? Is it better if you prevent them from getting into danger or into harm's way? Or is it better if they learn those lessons and they're able to 
develop skills and knowledge for themselves. While one might make you feel better at first, right? Feel like you're doing your job correctly. Is it better for the child? Is it better for that final piece of art? There's value to both. My goal is to not tell you one is wrong. And in fact, I think the balance is in both. It is finding the levels between one and the other and where happiness lives. Is that cliche? Is that is that cheesy as hell? It might be. And um, that's okay. <laughs> Life is full of cheese. You just have to accept it sometime. But, you know, in general, that's the point. And that's, that's the overriding thought of this piece. You know, I spent 180 hours. And it's funny because as I was making it, I remember getting to like the 120-hour mark. And I was like, ah. Oh, God, this has been the worst. It's so funny. I spent another third of the time on it. In retrospect, it's hilarious. Um, I got to like the 120-hour mark, and I was like, oh my God, this is the biggest piece I've ever done. But I can, I'm can, i almost done. And then I just nitpicked the hell out of it. But again, like, I am not dissatisfied with the result. I'm very happy with the result. Am I? Am I frustrated with my mentality? Sure, because... To an extent, I was kind of rushing towards the finish. I was so eager to be done because I had spent so much time on it. You know, I I worked very diligently. I, especially towards the end, like I said, I had a lot of breaks in between, but in doing these videos, it's given me purpose to make art more uh, often and more um, consumingly, if that makes sense. Like I can put more of my being into it. Um, but that also leads to burnout. Right, it leads to this feeling of uh, it, it. It is me. <laughs> I have no detachment from it because I, I, I'm. It's all consuming. So I was eager to get it done, but at the same time, I was nitpicking it and nitpicking it, and nitpicking it, and nitpicking it. And again, like I think often as I create art, that's usually the process I go down. And to iterate, it is okay to an extent because I don't think you're always going to know where you're going to go. Right? So example, if you're making a face, you might not know how the nose is going to look until you draw the line 10 times and it meets a curve that feels satisfactory. Um, but once you place the eyeballs, you might feel that they're at the wrong angle, so you have to shift everything. Like, that is all natural creative evolution. That makes sense. But if you keep harping on the same thing over and over and you just erase it or you undo and undo and undo, and there is a point where too much is too much. And it's about being self-aware. It's about assessing your art, assessing your practice, right? Your your point of, of control and thinking about, okay, is this good enough? How much is me obsessing about the quality of the art, the quality of the thing I'm producing, and how much is me obsessing about how it's going to be viewed? Because for me, I can tell you that's a huge thing. I... I want to know that people like it. I want to know that I am good enough. That's what I care about, right? I want to know that I'm accepted. I want to know that I'm valid in my existence and the things that I make. And it's a lot. It's it's hard to reconcile that in yourself, I think, sometimes. Because you want to feel like you're infallible or you you don't care about what people think. And I, to people who say they don't... Um, I hope that's true for you. <laughs> I find it very hard to believe that you don't give a shit, um, frankly. I think everybody cares. And maybe you care to different extents, um, but everybody cares. And you care for different reasons, right? Like I said, I care because I want to be accepted. I want to know that people see me, see the real me, and that that is good enough. But at the same time, I'm so afraid that they won't that I get hyper fixated and I have to make it perfect right which again goes to the point of my channel right I'm when I made my channel and I've talked about this before but when I made my channel I was so afraid to make my channel in the first place because I was so caught up in the idea of having the perfect idea having the exact thing that would define me and make me stand out and make me unique and getting fixated on that and never being good enough to make a video and it held me back for years, literal years, because I just never thought I had the good enough idea. It was impossible. It was this 
<laughs> incorporeal um, phantom of an idea that really wasn't a real thing. Um, at least not for me, <laughs> not for the things that I cared about, right? Like creation is iteration. Everything has already happened. We're just looking for ways that we can tweak it and modify it and make it into something that might stand on its own, but obviously has inspirations and callbacks to things that have already existed. So w making my channel, I've come to the realization that it's okay. It's okay to post things or to make things and share things that might not be 100% unique. But in their entirety, they are me. And I'm unique. I'm good enough. So the things that I make are good enough. The things that I make have value and they stand on their own. They do reflect an identity, a unique quality, even if they aren't inherently an original thought. And I think that, again, ties into the piece. It ties into the art and it ties into everything, again, that I'm trying to... To share and promote and um again it's interesting because it all feels like conflicting thoughts right because um i'm re-recording this video but i'm still trying to do it in a way that's me right i think um to an extent i wanted this video to feel like a video essay right it's kind of why when i'm refilming this i'm not really talking about the piece i'm i'm more or less talking about the creative process which is sort of the entire goal of my channel but a lot of creative, um, a lot of video essays, I suppose, is the word I was looking for, that I've watched online, um, they, they lean towards the idea of a uh, full voiceover. Maybe not showing the person, or the person just comes up regularly, or the um, predetermined scripts that are extremely finite and uh, uh, efficient in their delivery and in the message they're providing. And um, I don't... I don't think that that's what I'm supposed to do. I think for me, being honest and being genuine and talking off the cuff hopefully provides more value and more um, a direct impact in feelings of um, honesty because that is what I care about. While I care about efficiency, I care so much more about being genuine and in in being real with uh, my audience, which sounds really weird to say. Um, but I, I hope that I can provide a message to you that feels um, real and hopefully allows you to look at yourself because I think so many people don't. So many people are afraid to evaluate themselves and maybe not even afraid, but completely absent of the thought of analyzing themselves, if that makes sense, right? Like you wander through your life and you're so con uh, consumed by like your day-to-day -day interactions, right? What am I having for lunch? Let's. I'm in this conversation, but are you really thinking about the conversation, the conversation that you just had, are you analyzing it? Are you going back to overall life goals and points that matter or don't matter? Like, are you satisfied? Are you happy in your job? Are you happy as a person? Like, these are all things that matter and they're all points of evaluation that truly are important and not to make this a whole <laughs> deep dive on emotions and human detachment styles but it's relevant it is because a lot of people wander through their life with blindness or or the idea of shutting themselves down because it it more suits this idea of who they have to be Right? Like, I don't have a, I don't have time to be sad. I don't have time to show my real emotions because I am this pillar. I am this um, vehicle for other people to be happy. I am uh, simply here to make money so that my kids can feel okay. And all of those things have value. And they most likely all come from a very important and honest and true center. But you matter too. The things that you care about matter. And... What you're putting out into the world has importance and directly reflects you. So having a, an intuitive mind, being able to assess yourself and, yourself and the things you do and the things you like and the things you put out are all extremely important because you impact other people. Whether you know it or you don't, you directly impact other people. And you impact yourself. There's no reason to wander through your life in 
misery and wallow when you do have the means of changing that, even though it might feel blind, even though it might feel like you can't see the end and you don't know where you're going, right? It's creative evolution. It's allowing things to happen if you are open to letting them happen and not obsessing over, I've been at this job for 10 years and it's miserable, but I'm going to keep doing it because I don't have a choice. Or I'm going to nitpick this and <laughs> do this drawing for 180 hours. But again, what I reconciled at the end of my drawing and what I came to realize is that, yes, I did nitpick. I, def I definitely did. But to some extent, it's okay. It's okay if I'm able to learn and I'm able to move forward. Because again, this piece, I was very focused on it having weight and importance. I spent 180 hours on it. It's the biggest piece I've ever done. It was months of work. Um, and I wanted it to have impact. I wanted this video to matter. And it's funny, like I've posted, um, you know, pictures of this on Twitter, for example. And I'm like, yeah, this will this will be the one. <laughs> it's frequently gets said to me. This will be the one. I'll post it online and it'll it'll be so so big, everyone's going to love it. You wait, I'm going to blow up. And, uh, you know, crickets. <laughs> no fanfare. You get like three people who like it. But most of the people who follow me on Twitter are like uh, porn accounts of like <laughs> random women who have never commented on my video. But they follow you, so you follow them. That's the most uh, most of my followers. Um, so gratifying, right? <laughs> feel like uh, people really see you. That's why they're following you. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's that's uh, that's life. It's all full of shit. And uh, the only people who care are people in the entertainment industry. The adult entertainment industry. Um, no, but point being, like, I, uh, you know, I posted online with the intent of it mattering. And it doesn't really go anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Because guess what? The whole reason I made it was really for me because I wanted it to make it for me. And it eventually turned into this thing that had to be perfect for other people when that was never really the goal when I started. It just built up all this weight behind it because I spent so long on it and I had to find meaning for the piece. I had to find a way to reconcile <laughs> my pain, I suppose. And I think that's pretty damn human. Um, and I think that's the reason why I was critical of this video when I was making it because I wanted to find reason for why I made the piece. And I don't really care if this video blows up or gets a bunch of views or gets like three, like, but I thought it would be at least interesting because after finishing the piece and in making this video, I was able to put these thoughts together and I was able to reconcile the fact that I did nitpick it. I did spend too long on it. I am happy with how it came out, but I wish I could have approached it from the beginning in a different way. And in that being said, I still learned a lot. And I think I'll be able to evaluate how I can move forward better next time and how I can proceed in a way that makes me happy, that I don't have to spend 180 hours on, that it doesn't matter so much if someone doesn't like it. Because I might still be satisfied with it. Because it evolved naturally. Because I didn't nitpick it into oblivion and find faults in my own delivery, in my own style of creation. Because everybody is unique. And everybody gets to do things the way that makes them happy. And the way that is inherently true to them. And that's okay. And that's good. And I think that's what everybody should strive for. So I think there is a point where, you know, perfectionism and creative evolution get stuck in this middling, uh, you know, turmoil or, or quagmire of a, of a soupy mess where they do overlap. But I think as long as you're assessing yourself, assessing why you're doing something, why it matters to you, then I think you'll be able to know when you're done. I think you'll be able to know when to say, I'm happy with this. This is good enough. It's good enough for me. It doesn't matter what everybody else says. Do I still care? Of course. I'm not going to lie and say that I don't. 
But the real goal is that I'm happy. I care about what I made. I care about how it came out. And it's good enough. And that's... That's the goal. I think. So, this video hopefully wasn't too rambly. I hope it was interesting and still valuable and still um, <laughs> probably not what you expected when you clicked on it. Uh, we didn't really talk about the video, but I would love to hear if it mattered. Um, I would love to hear if you've experienced something similar in your life, and it doesn't have to relate to art at all. I hope you realize that most of the time when I'm talking, I try to make this an open discussion for people who don't even care about art. I try to make it a very um, overarching thought because everybody is everybody. Everybody is unique and cares about their own things and has their own lives. And I, I want to be able to reach people and potentially help people and let them see things. So um, yeah, if you liked it, let me know. Um, I often feel guilty for saying like, comment, and subscribe, but I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, the more likes and comments, um, one, it, it makes me feel good. I love to be able to see people commenting and engaging. Um, that is the goal, but I would like to be able to grow the channel and I would like to be able to do this more permanently because I find a lot of value for myself in making these videos and it makes me really happy. And, um, yeah, so like, comment, and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's the end of the video. Again, I do hope you liked it. Um, if you did, stick around. We have more videos. I generally post every Tuesday. It's a thing. So um, yeah, until next time. See you then. But the quality of that original line art is so fuzzy that I can't continue to keep it. For all my quoth stands out there, here's your reward for watching the whole video. He didn't show up in the retake, but he wasn't the original.